We've talked about how the main virtue of the ERP technique is its temporal resolution. This means it can be very valuable to focus on the latency of an ERP component rather than the amplitude. In this video, I'm going to talk about how the latency of the P3 wave can tell us a lot about the timing of specific neurocognitive processes. To explain P3 latency, I want to talk about this very old oddball study by Marta Kudis, Greg McCarthy, and Manny Donchin. They presented names on a video display, with one name every two seconds. 80% of the names were typical American male names of the time, such as Michael, David, and John. 20% of the names were typical female names, such as Nancy and Sarah. Each individual name only appeared once for a given subject. In the key condition, subjects were asked to press one button for male names and a different button for female names. Because 80% of the stimuli were male names and 20% were female names, the male names were standards and the female names were oddballs. So, even though any individual name only appeared once per subject, the category of female names was rare and the category of male names was frequent. And recall that it's the probability of the task to find category that matters for the P3, not the probability of the physical stimulus. In the ERP core, for example, we got a bigger P3 for the target letter B than for the standard letters, even though each individual letter, A, B, C, D, and E, appeared on 20% of trials. Here's what the results of the CUDA study looked like. These aren't the real data. The original paper didn't provide a figure overlaying the targets and the standards. But this is approximately what they found. You can see that the rare female names generated a larger P3 than the frequent male names, even though any individual male or female name was presented only once. Now let's consider a logical implication of this study that wasn't obvious back in the 1970s. Because P3 amplitude depends on the probability of the task-defined category, the ERPs can't differ between the oddballs and the standards until the brain has begun to determine which task-defined category a given stimulus belongs to. If the brain hasn't determined that Nancy belongs to the rare category and Michael belongs to the frequent category, how could Nancy elicit a larger P3 than Michael? So, if the rare and frequent stimulus categories elicit different amplitudes by 300 milliseconds, we can logically conclude that the brain has begun to classify the stimuli into the rare and frequent categories by 300 milliseconds. If we make a rare minus frequent difference wave, we can restate this by saying that the brain must have begun to categorize the stimuli by the time the difference wave deviates from zero, which is right around 300 milliseconds in these artificial data. Now, let's think about what would happen if we made the names dimmer. This would increase the amount of time it would take to perceive each name. If we slow down perception, this slowing will propagate to all subsequent processes, delaying the categorization of the stimuli as male or female. And if we delay the categorization, we should delay the onset of the rare minus frequent difference. It should look something like this, with maybe a 50 millisecond rightward shift of the rare minus frequent difference wave for the dim stimuli. We'd also expect to see about a 50 millisecond slowing of response times. If we slow perception, then we slow categorization. If we slow categorization, we slow the response. Or we could instead try to slow categorization directly. Imagine that the task was to count the letters in each name and press one of two buttons to indicate whether it was an odd number or an even number. If we make odd numbers rare and even numbers frequent, we could make a rare minus frequent difference wave. It would take you longer to count the letters in Nancy than to determine whether Nancy is a male or female name and that would increase the time needed for the brain to determine whether a given name fell into the rare category or the frequent category, and that would delay the rare minus frequent ERP difference. All of this is logically true, but it's also empirically true. Many studies from the Donchin lab in the 70s and 80s showed that the latency of the P3 wave depends on what they called stimulus evaluation time, which is the amount of time required to perceive and categorize a stimulus.